what's up guys welcome back to my Chicago pro prep now 10 weeks out so if you haven't been following along you can check back the last video I was 12 weeks out went over everything I'm doing for diet cardio weight training all leading up to the show and giving you all the reasons behind why I'm doing these things so uh, just to update you from the last video I was around I think 230 231 I've had a lot of changes happen over these past two weeks everything's really sped up for me so this morning it was, it was following a, a, high, a refeed day, so I was 228, but uh, the prior day before the refeed, I hit a low of 226, so over these past two weeks, I've come down a good six, seven pounds, and I, I can definitely tell, you probably see it in my face right now watching the video, um, but it's all been very positive change. Uh, things to really note over the past few weeks were like, my refeed days have gotten a lot larger, so I'm doing almost 700 grams of carbs in my refeed days. And, and noticing that I'm uptaking it very, very quickly. And also over the next few days, I'll drop that off really fast. Like my RAS refeed, I went through that amount of glycogen in just a day and was back to a new low weight within two days afterwards. So what I am able to do now is, is using refeeds, getting more responsive from it. I'm able to add more food back into my original plan and also manage my recovery really well. And I think that's, I can't even emphasize how important that is on prep to be monitoring recovery and managing it day to day. Um, so I have a lot of people that, you know, they're, they're running plans, they're running diets and pushing cardio, and they'll have one day where maybe they're up longer, they have a long day at work, maybe sleep goes to crap, and they wake up and, and that is the moment that they push into this phase where it's so hard to, re hard to recover from and cortisol levels starts rising and they start stalling and then they make the choice to push harder when really that choice should be to pull back. So I think that's what I've done, D done a better job on this prep is knowing when to pull back and when to push. So I've had some days where I wake up and I can feel it and my legs feel heavy and I'll just not, I'll just not do cardio that day. Even though it's on my plan and like uh, for a mental aspect, usually I'm the person to like, We'll push harder to get there no matter what, but actually pulling back keeps me getting tighter and not having to go to extremes to get body fat off yet. Uh, I think at this body weight last year, I was already doing a lot more cardio, lower food, and I had a lot of fat burners in place too. Like I was starting to max out all my tools, which I haven't got there yet. So overall, it's, it's, it's been great. So for, uh, for monitoring your recovery, you know, a great tool to use would be look at your average resting heart rate in the mornings. You start seeing that rising, that might mean your, your recovery is diminishing. Also, you can look at heart rate variability, monitoring see if your heart rate variability is increasing over the weeks. That also means you're having more sympathetic nervous system uh, occur, which um, in the mornings you should have more parasympathetic ner uh, nervous system activity. Um, I would also look at how's your energy field during the day, how's digestion during the day. Those are good indicators. How is your sleep? How is gym performance? Um, and how is, how is your, your joint health feeling? Look at all those, look at that whole picture. And if, if it looks like everything's starting to go downhill, take an extra day off on prep and then go back to it and see if you get a good response out of it. Um, that'd be my, my advice. But anyway, today we are here for a pull session. So it's gonna be a little bit more uh, emphasis on lats and terrace major. Uh, so I'll have a little bit more vertical pulling and uh, we'll get into it. So first movement of the day, I'm doing a, a lap pull down with the four in one 20 inch prime handle and I have the grips turned fully supinated. Um, I feel like with that angle, I, I get the best lat contraction that I can and you'll see I'm like leaning back about 15 degrees. So if you come all the way up to 90 degrees, leaning all the way forward, you actually shorten the lat some, you won't get the fullest range of motion. So I am trying to get the, the best range of motion I can while doing these. Um, and, and pay attention guys, all these back moves I do today, I am gonna really control the eccentric. I see a lot of people pull down quick and just let it fly up. But keep intention in the eccentric phase and also in the fully lengthened phase. So let, let all your rows come all the way out, really protract the scapulas. That's gonna give you the best back development. Um, for programming these, if you have weak biceps, it's a good idea. You can kind of double up and have some more supinated work, palms up. That way it does give you a little bit more bicep stimulus when, when programming. 
So just something to keep in mind. But going to uh, hit a set of like six to 10 reps, do a back off set for 12 to 15, then move on to the next movement. So the second exercise I'm doing is a seated low cable row. I'm using that same prime handle. I, I did switch the grip to more of a neutral grip. Um, I feel like I could get a better line with my wrist and elbow and not having my hands turn in or excellently rotate anything like that. Um, I'm going to this one because it gets the lat in a really good shortened phase and you can get a really hard contraction. The key here, and you'll see I'm elevated, I have my booster seat up, is so the wrist isn't higher than my elbow and getting a lot of bicep into it. I'm trying to keep that right at 90 degrees when I'm fully contracted. Um, also, you'll see me only bring my elbow back to when it comes in line with my body. So you can see like, I'm stopping here. That's the lap. Anything farther back than that, you're bringing up your traps and your rhomboids to get your elbows back all the way. So if you're trying to emphasize lat on your low cable row, just stop right when the elbows come, uh, come, come uh, right in line with the body. Don't go any further back. Stay up closer to 90 degrees and make sure, I think of it as I'm dragging that prime handle, I'm almost trying to drag it along the bottom of my thigh. Keep, keep it pulled really low, driving the elbows down and back. The same thing over here, we'll work up to a set of like six to 10, do a back off set and hit 12 to 15 reps. All right, so next movement I'm going to, third exercise. It's a bent over barbell row, but I'm doing it in a Smith machine. And I'm also bracing my chest with an incline bench. I have like a yoga mat on top of it just for some padding. Um, I really like bent over barbell rows. I think they're great builders for traps. Um, my problem in the past has been loading hands, glutes, and spinal rectors a lot doing them, and then also, you know, catching that, have, catching momentum to get the weight moving, and then just the uh, transition from that eccentric to concentric, it, it puts a lot of strain on the spine. And my spinal rectors are so developed, I, I need to take them out of the movement because they're, they're strong movers and they can take over easy. Um, and also, like, what I'm trying to hit are traps and lats. I don't need anything else moving. So the, the more I can brace my torso and, and have, have that, uh, that relief taken off my lower back, the, the better contraction I'm gonna get out of the other muscles and keep tension on those muscles throughout the range of motion. I see guys doing Benar rows, just rocking back and forth and you know popping it up. And I mean, you're gonna grab some tension throughout some, some of that range of motion, but also you're having a lot of other muscles assist and build momentum. So I, I think this is a great way to really lock yourself in place and, and be super focused where you wanna apply, apply the tension. Save your lower back movements, your hip hinge movements, for, for when you're meant to do them. Like put all of it into your deadlifts, your Romanian deadlifts. Save your back on your bent over rows and, and put that t tension on your lats and traps. Um, but I, I am taking kind of a wider grip and I am rowing about mid, uh, right at the bottom base of my sternum. So, but you should feel a lot, like a lot of trap work happening while you're doing these. Fourth back exercise, so going back to another pull down. This one will be a little bit more of a partial range of motion, doing a wide grip pull down, staying really up at right, 90 degrees, and just pulling down to about my forehead. You can get a lot of terrace major involved, so, or if you want to call it like upper lat, but that's what's going to give you that really pronounced V taper and thickness underneath your arms. Um, and just keeping that range of motion short, you're working the very strong part where you have a, a, a lot of good mechanical advantage so you can really go heavy and, and overload that part of the movement a lot. So I'll work up to a set of eight to 10, and then again, back off set, 12 to 15 reps. I guess so I finished up that fourth exercise. Um, give it a try because you will see how pumped up your terrace major gets and you'll feel it right up into the armpit, feel like you can't put your arms down uh, be progressive with that move, and I promise you will build some solid V taper out of it. Um, so next move I'm moving on to, it is a compound move, but it is it does have a lot of emphasis for the rear delts. I got it from Dante Trudell. He was doing these rows standing, but I'm doing them prone on an incline bench to keep that chest bracing, keep the movement strict. 
have a little short barbell loaded up with uh, some 25 pound plates on it that have the handles so I can grip really really wide grab the handles and it starts off with tension right away in the rear delt range of motion is kind of short um, but but you, you keep that tension in the movement and uh, I do a rest pause set so I go to failure around 12 to 15 reps rest 20 seconds go to failure again rest 20 seconds go to failure again and uh, it's a solid move, and then from there I'll move on to my isolation work for the for the workout. So total right now, we have five compound movements, and then we'll get probably three isolation movements after that. All right. So next movement I'm going into is isolation for rear delts. I'm just doing a rear pec deck fly. Um, I keep the reps higher. So the whole workout, I've I've worked in some lower rep ranges. I think rear delts they do get a good response with a little bit higher reps. Um, this part of the workout is more for like metabolic stress pump um, though that will not be my entire workout my entire workouts mainly focus on providing a lot of mechanical tension and that is I can't even emphasize how important it is on prep to keep your strength up and not lose tissue while you're dieting I also believe that's what's gonna bring you in very very hard so you have someone if you're doing pump workouts in here that is not the way to prep for your show if your strengths drop and you're using lighter weights less reps and not putting as much effort in you will lose tissue and, and your weight loss is going to be more of lean tissue and a little bit of body fat you're going to end up being looking skinny fat on stage not always the case but if you want to keep the most mass possible you have to stay progressive track your workouts come in here with the goal to hit what you need to hit for your weight your reps put a lot of effort in that's the main thing putting uh, a, a, working on those hard reps, those hard stimulating reps that are, that are grinders, those are the ones you want to get after. So, Anyway, on the uh, rear delt, the pec deck fly, I'm going to do two sets. to try to hit like a failure set between around 15 reps, then I'll stick with the same weight and do a second set to failure again. All right, so now I'm moving on to biceps. I'm going to do two movements, one with uh, hand supination, elbow flexion for more emphasis on just the bicep, then also uh, a hammer curl for more brachialis break your radialis. Um, today I'm going to start with the hammer curl because my other day I start with the more the movement that has more bicep emphasis. Also I am having a little bit of it's, it's golfers elbow and obviously I, I don't golf but it's just where the forearm muscles attach uh, in the medial side of the elbow they just get really inflamed so anything involving like a lot of wrist flexion really really irritates it so I'm trying to limit that while it heals it's really not a great approach to heal it besides rest and I'm not gonna be resting on prep so I'll start with a dumbbell hammer strength that doesn't bother it and then I'll probably do some type of like ankle strap curl to alleviate some of that as it's as it's healing anyway on the dumbbell I'll, I'll do a dumbbell hammer curl um, I'll do a rest pause set like I did on the the rear delt row I'll just do one set of that um, and then move on to my uh, my, my subinated curl so this last move for biceps, I'm just using an incline bench for, for like a preacher bench. I have these ankle straps hooked up just so I can completely take my, my wrist out of it and relieve my, for, my forearm muscles. Um, gets a lot of tension in the short phase and you have a lot of let off in the lengthy phase. Um, but again, it's my last move for biceps, so it's a, it's a good finisher. Um, I'll hit two sets, stay in between like 12, 15 reps on these. All right, guys. So that's that wrapped up pull day. Following this reefy day, like things that I'm monitoring is definitely like my gym performance today. Like, was that an adequate carbohydrate that I amount that I had on my reefy day to carry over and give me some extra performance? So I'm looking for strength improvements. How my my pumps are in the gym. How my stamina is in the gym. Like, am I fading towards the end? And uh, overall, like, I feel like. I'm, I'm pretty pretty nailed on, on the amount of carbohydrates I need to have some good performance carry out, which is about that 700 gram carb mark. So I could get a good pump today. I improved on a few lifts. So um, overall, I think the, the refeed day was productive going in. So that's good things to monitor for you when you, if you have a, a refeed day while you're cutting or your contest prep, uh, what to look for in the gym while, while you're uh, following those days, you know. And other things like monitor your appetite the next day. Sometimes you get really hungry showing maybe you do have a boost in metabolic effect. Maybe you might burn through those carbs faster and it speeds you up, so you might need to make an adjustment off that. But that uh, wraps up the pull day.